In the last session, we have seen the design of a modate asynchronous counter. We used three T flip flops in that construction. The number of flip flops used were decided after considering the modulus of the counter. We used the relation m less than or equal to 2 raised to n, where n is the number of flip flops. So, uh, 2 raised to 3 equal to 8 or n equal to 3. This means, using 3 flip-flops, we can make a counter which counts 8 states. After this 8 states, it resets. It resets naturally, in fact. In other words, 8 is the natural count or 8 is the natural mode of this counter with 3 flip-flops. If we have 4 flip-flops, then we can count up to 2 raised to 4 equal to 16 states. Or the natural mode of the counter with 4 flip-flops is 16. If we use 5 flip-flops, 2 raised to 5 equal to 32 is the natural mode of the counter. For 6 flip-flops, uh, the natural mode is 2 raised to 6 equal to 64 and so on. There are situations which requires other modes. For instance, we may need to fill 10 biscuits in a packet and want to use an electronic counter to control uh, the number of biscuits going into each packet. How could we do this? Here, we want to make a counter which counts only up to 10 states and then resets. Let's start the design. How many flip-flops? Well, we have the relation m less than or equal to 2 raised to n or 10 less than or equal to 2 raised to n. If we use n equal to 3, then 2 raised to 3 equal to 8, which is less than uh, the required mode. The required mode is 10. Now let's use n equal to 4, 2 raised to 4 equal to 16. So 10 lies between 8 and 16. So at least we need to use 4 flip-flops. So we have decided on the number of flip-flops to be used. The next phase is selection of flip-flops. We are going to use JK flip-flops now with a, a negative edge triggering. This is a negative edge trigger JK flip-flop. Now let's write the required binary states and counts. This is part 3. Binary states and counts. The states through which the counter passes through before it resets are represented 0, 0, 0, 0. And the next state is 1, 0, 1, 0, which is the 11th state, which should not be there. So this should be replaced by 0, 0, 0, 0. This is what is meant by reset. Now these are the states and the counts are, this is the first count, second, third, fourth, After the 10th count, 
it should reset to the original state. This is what we require. This is established with the help of an AND gate and the reset terminals. The idea is to activate the AND gate when a 1010 is reached at the output of the counter. Now, we should make a circuit to satisfy this condition. We need 4 JK flip-flops. As in the case of modate counter, the external clock is given at the first flip-flop only. The output Q1 is taken as the least significant bit. This is the least significant bit. The clock is given. The fourth flip-flop's output Q4 is the most significant bit of the binary number. Clocks for other flip-flops are derived from the outputs of the previous flip-flops. JK terminals of all the flip-flops are shorted together and connected to the logic state 1. Now let's write the truth table. For the 0th clock, Q4, Q3, Q2 and Q1 are 0. This is the first count. When clock is 1, the output is 0, 0, 0, 1. This is count 2. At the 10th clock, the output will be 1, 0, 1, 0. This means Q4 is 1, Q3 is 0, Q2 is 1 and Q1 is 0. This should be made 0, 0, 0, 0. For this, we take the outputs Q4 and Q2 and give it at the input of an AND gate. We take Q4 from here and Q2 from here and give it to an AND gate and the output of the AND gate is given to all the reset pins. Whenever the logic condition 1, 0, 1, 0 appears at the output of the counter. It will now reset the counter to 0, 0, 0, 0. Because when there is a 1, 0, 1, 0 at the output, this 1 will go to the AND gates input. This 1 will also go to the AND gates input, which will result in an output of 1, which will be directly given to the reset pins of all the flip-flops which will reset all the flip-flops to their 0, 0, 0, 0 value or to the initial status. Now what remaining is the timing diagram. We shall draw the timing diagram of the flip-flops. 
At first we draw the clock. This is zeroth clock. This is the first negative edge, second, third, These are the negative edges. Let's mark these negative edges by dotted lines. Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4. Q1 will toggle at each negative edge of the external clock. So, it will toggle at the first negative words, again at the second negative words, the third negative words. These are the negative edges of the output of Q1. When the negative edge of the Q1 is available at the clock of the Q2, Q2 will toggle. So Q2 will toggle at first, at the second clock, then it toggles at the fourth clock, then at the sixth clock, then at the eighth clock, then it is supposed to toggle at the tenth clock also, which is prevented by the reset, so it will retain its status. Q3 toggles at the negative edge of the output Q2, so it toggles at the fourth flip-flop for the first time, then it toggles at the 8th clock and so on. Q4 gets its clock from the output Q3 and it toggles at the 8th clock for the first time and afterwards at the 10th clock pulse it is forcefully made zero by the reset of the flip-flop. This is the timing diagram of an asynchronous moditan counter constructed using negative edge triggered flip-flops. This is the truth table. At the 10th clock, the count reaches back to 1. This is the circuit diagram and this is how we create a mod 10 counter.